Hi, I'm Dr. Jacob Hartz at Boston Children's Hospital, and I'm the director of the preventive cardiology program here. I'm with Skylar Griggs, one of our dietitians, and we're here to talk to you about cardiovascular health in kids as part of Heart Month. Yeah, we're really excited to be here today. Um, what do you think is, is the importance of cardiovascular health in, in kids? Yeah, that's a great question. It's uh, sometimes hard to think about because we consider heart disease like heart attacks and strokes right. happening in older uh, patients. But really, those risk factors start developing in childhood. Mm -hmm. And as we've learned more, we can intervene earlier, which can reduce those risks later on in life. Right. And so we really want to start thinking about cardiovascular disease across the lifespan. Mm -hmm. I think pe people are often surprised that we see um, children with high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Certainly. Um, yeah. Oftentimes, when I tell people that, they're surprised that, that there's a clinic that does mm -hmm. that. But I feel like that's what's so wonderful about our clinic is that we're a prevention focused clinic. And so kind of seeing those patients now prevents things later in life. Yeah. And one point to make is that oftentimes these risk factors, they're not going to show up on a physical exam, right. but through screening like uh, blood pressure at your well child visit or lipid screening, which we recommend to occur between the ages of 9 and 11, and again, sometimes between 17 and 19 years old, mm -hmm. um, because these are sometimes hidden risk factors. In fact, blood pressure used to be called the silent killer because people just didn't know they had it. Right, And right. so finding those out and uh, addressing them early is always important. Right, and I think it's been really interesting to kind of see what foods affect cholesterol and, and blood pressure. Yeah. We have um, evidence-based recommendations around the things that we generally think you know improve blood pressure and, and blood cholesterol. And we spend some time with our patients, um, as you know, kind of discussing those things related to their lipid abnormalities, which I think is a great thing within our clinic is that we provide such specific counseling based on, on those numbers. Can you tell me a little bit about like what you do talk about with kids as far as... <laughs> as uh, we're passing each other in the yeah, hallway, you yeah, and I, yes. <laughs> through the years. Yes. Yes. So when when a patient with high cholesterol comes into our clinic, uh, we spend some time kind of... You spend the majority of your time going through the lipid profile and explaining to them kind of what the numbers mean. And then myself and my three other um, dietitian colleagues spend some time working on lifestyle changes with them and kind of setting realistic goals that work um, within the confines of their day-to-day -day life. Because the reality is if we recommend something and it's not going to work, you know, with their schedule, then it's not sustainable. So we really try to provide the patients with a couple goals that they can walk away with to optimize their heart health through diet. So thinking about things, um, again, this is very dependent on the type of high cholesterol you have, but different types of healthy fats and unhealthy fats, increasing your intake of fiber and and fruits and vegetables and whole grains. Um, you know, you and I often joke that a general heart healthy diet diet is really just a healthy lifestyle. Um, and, and so when we meet with these patients, we really get targeted with them on, on, on what is important for their lipid abnormalities. Or as you mentioned, we see patients with elevated blood pressure. So we might spend some time talking with them about how to limit sodium in their diet or increase um, the intake of fiber rich foods, which we you know know are, are very good for the heart um, as well. So I think what what um, what do you think has been kind of helpful in terms of working alongside a dietitian within our clinic? I think when we talk with kids and and their families, it's important to emphasize that we're really hoping that they have a healthy relationship with foods right. and aren't thinking about is this a good food or a bad food? Right. That doesn't seem to lead to success. Um, what we really hope that they can do is enjoy food and it can be a, a nice part of their life that they can Celebration. celebrate. <laughs> right. Yeah. Celebrations. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we think about all the celebrations we have in our life, they always involve food. And right. that's because food is wonderful. Right. And, right. Uh, we want to try to capture that with each meal and think about okay i'm i'm eating this meal and i'm thinking about the food and enjoying this moment with my family and right. with with our food of course that's not easy right and so i hope that our clinic can help uh provide strategies to accomplish that when they're just 
isn't time during the day to do all these things that we want to do. And through all the different lifespans. I mean, we see patients of all different ages. So, Certainly. you know, we see patients might come to us when they're two or they might come to us when they're 22. And I think one thing that's been really wonderful for both of us is to kind of see our patients through those different stages of life because so many different things come up in terms of their diet and nutrition mm -hmm. based on what stage of life they're in. So from, you know, eating lunch at school to eating lunch at college to getting their driver's license, all those habits start to change based on kind of where they are in their life. So I think that that's, that's a great point. And I also, I think sometimes people come to our clinic and they think, oh, they're going to tell me exactly what I shouldn't be eating. But in opposite, it, we really want to encourage patients to eat different types of foods. And there are many heart healthy foods. Um, one thing we often talk about is uh, increasing intake of heart healthy fats. So mm -hmm. people come to us and, you know, they they are nervous that they can't eat different types of fats or grains. And, and we really, really want to promote a positive relationship with food um, and encourage them to eat things like mono and polyunsaturated fats and, sure. and whole grains because we know that it's it's good for their heart. So um, I think sometimes, as you mentioned, it's hard to talk to children about food and promote a positive relationship with food. And one thing that you and I have spent a lot of time talking about is this idea of a food safe house and and how, um, you know, the food that is brought into the house for the most part, we hope is is healthy. And the food that, you know, they um, the more indulgent type foods is is kind of limited to that 20 percent of the time. We say 80, 20 in our clinic. So if you eat healthy 80 percent of the time, then 20 percent of the time. Sure. I mean, I love Chinese food and cake from time to time as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that goes in the 80% or the yeah, 20%? Yeah, exactly. depends what day you ask me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think when you brought up bringing food into the home, that it's yeah. really important to think of um, the whole family being involved. Right. It becomes really challenging for a child to make a change if they're the only ones who Absolutely. are um, having this change be put upon them. And I think we find that families, even though they may be reluctant at first, uh, really get engaged and enjoy making these changes when they're all doing it together. Mm -hmm. And that's where like we find the most success. It's, right. um, it's really hard if it's just one person. Absolutely. And of course, it is a little bit more challenging to get everybody involved and uh, on board, mm -hmm. but it does occur and that leads to great change. For everybody. Right. And and as you know, we see parents that often have elevated cholesterol or elevated mm -hmm. blood pressure. So the changes that we're recommending to their children are changes that an adult provider would probably recommend to them as well. So taking a family based approach with something like high cholesterol, high blood pressure is is going to do great good and, and, and no harm. So I, I think it's the family based approach is particularly important in our patient population. Yeah. Even for those kids who don't have a lipid abnormality or right. high blood pressure, these healthy lifestyle choices, uh, an appropriate diet and a sufficient physical activity are, um, are beneficial to them. And it's beneficial to be, uh, to have these health behaviors, even if we don't see the changes in the numbers necessarily, we still know that they have an effect on your overall cardiovascular disease health and just overall quality of life. Yep. I think that's absolutely true. And I think sometimes when um, when patients come in, they, it's, it's almost more beneficial to say, hey, let's work on increasing your intake of healthy fats like avocados and fish mm. and nuts and seeds. And let's work on choosing more whole grains versus saying, let's take this away. Let's take this yeah. away. Let's take this really away. really hard to take things away. Right. Right. So, versus kind of adding things back in. Um, what kind of patients come to our clinic, would you say? Um, they come from all over and a variety of risk factors and backgrounds. Um, in general, I, I think we see patients who come to us for high blood pressure or hypertension. Then we have patients who come to us with high triglycerides and then high tr cholesterol. And these can be a combination of related to some other underlying disease. Um, they are often genetic or they can be based on um, uh, as a result of lifestyle choices. Right. Um, and oftentimes there's a combination of all of those. Right. Uh, but those are our main big groups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have a wonderful team that we work with. So we have how many physicians that? We have 
four physicians now and how you t- who else four is- dietitians and Three nurses, nurse practi- three, three, three nurses, nurses and two, two nurse, nurse practitioners. practitioners. Yep. And then yeah. social work as we yeah. kind of needed and different yeah. support services. We um, love to provide our patients with education. We have various mm. cookbooks available in our clinic, um, cultural cookbooks and patient education. Mm. We really try to have the patient walk away with as many resources as they can from grocery shopping lists to snack lists um, and really understand kind of some quick and, and easy changes that they can make. And, and hopefully they find that helpful. Yeah, I like to think of our clinic as a resource, as a place where families can come in and be like, okay, we want to reduce our risk for cardiovascular disease. How do we incorporate that into our life? Yes. And uh, I hope that we can help provide them with uh, options and strategies to do that. Yeah, I hope they feel like they walk away with that kind of information yeah. and and the resources you know, to, to get in touch with us if they have questions. Yeah. The great thing about our clinic is that we operate in so many different satellite sites. We have sites in Peabody and Lexington and Waltham. Uh, Weymouth and North Dartmouth. Milford. And Milford. Yep. And of course here in Boston. Right, right. Our main site in Boston. So hopefully we're reaching many different types of patients um, that way. We also offer virtual visits yep. Yep. Um, for patients that prefer that route as well. Uh, and we're also able to see more patients that way, which yeah. which is great. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today uh, at the Answers for Families Heart Health episode. We really appreciate your time and we hope that you found some useful tips in this discussion. Yeah, thanks so much.